Mom and Dad, are you ready? Today's word is stupendous. You need some encouragement. Stupendous marriage encouragement. You need some inspiration. We just looked at each other at that conference and we're just like, duh. <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> Why are we not doing this? What are we thinking? You're listening to the Stupendous Marriage Show with our friends Stu and Lisa Gray. I don't know that word. Stupendous. The Stupendous Marriage Show. Hey there, welcome to the Stupendous Marriage Show. I am Stu Gray. Hey, I'm Lisa Gray. How are you, babe? What's going on? Um, I'm good. You sound horrible. I mean, you don't sound horrible, but <laughs> you're like, Ugh. I'm full of uh, snot and gunk. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to be like this time of year. I know. It's so weird. It doesn't normally happen, but uh, I got an ear infection over Christmas and it you know, took out medicine and I got all better and... Now all of a sudden it's come back. My head is full. My ear is full. Yeah. My I feel it like in my chest and drain. It's yummy, delicious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't describe it yummy. That's so gross. Like ooh, because unfortunately I can visualize that. Yeah, that it, yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Well, you know the weird thing is, is this time of year. So Tennessee, which is where we live is so unpredictable with weather. And generally, this time of year, it's pretty dry and cold. If it's wet, it's a cold wet. And right now, it's 65 degrees today. And then tomorrow, it's going to be like 40-something. Yeah, it's been like fall weather. Right? It's not like... In January. So, I don't know what's going on. But that I don't think that helps. I don't think that helps with our allergies and our inflammation in our body. And and then maybe the poor eating that we all did over the holidays yes, might have contributed. True. true, true, true. Happy New Year. It's yes. 2019. Woo-hoo! And we had Christmas and New Year's and that was a pretty low key for us, but good. Yeah. Um seems like all is well. Yes. And it's all behind us now. <laughs> Which is kind of weird and exciting at the same time. Like we've been packing up the Christmas tree and all the boxes and it kind of makes me sad because it's just so pretty when it's all decorated for Christmas. And then it also like, oh, yay, we're done with that. And we're moving into a new year and new things and, and new holidays. And so it's kind of a weird place to be right now. Like right now, we don't have an inflatable outside in front of our house. And, and that's OK. <laughs> and no. No, That's no, no. okay. So thankfully, my mother-in-law came to the rescue and sent us a Valentine's inflatable several years ago. And so I am so I'm going to probably put it up today, just so you know, because I am <laughs> missing an inflatable being out in front of our house. We don't have to have something inflated <sighs> in front of our house, but if we were going to do something for the new year, <laughs> it would need to be like 2019. You know, we should have like the year yeah. inflatable. Oh, See, that, that would, would be, be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. You remember that house in our old neighborhood? They would take their Christmas lights. They'd have Christmas lights up for Christmas and then they'd take everything down and then they'd do the lights in the new year oh, on their front yard. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Uh-uh. Maybe they only did it like one time, but I remember whatever, you know, that weird week, you yeah. know, between Christmas and New Year's, they took down all their lights and just nice. outlined, you know, 2000, whatever year it was in their yard. I was like, that's not a bad idea. We need to do that, honey. We need to do something because it's just See, really boring. Uh, with all the things we think we need to do. I mean, <laughs> we have all these great ideas and this Christmas it was, oh, let's get everybody on our block to do something together because we're going to win the neighborhood Christmas thing and next year. So uh, we were out looking for new Christmas lights. And oh, so how can we like get everybody on our street to do the same type of Christmas lights so we can win next year? And yeah, yeah. So we have these great ideas and great plans and I think thoughts for the future. I think we're pulling that one off. I, I do. <laughs> I, I think really? that we have momentum. I think that we have a vision. We've intentionally bought things that we can use next year. We have a vision for the first time in our yard. So for our Christmas lights, I can't wait for that part of next of this year, this Christmas in December to be able to pull that off. So I'm hopeful. And then New Year's was pretty much just New Year's. Yeah. There wasn't much to it. It was yeehaw. (laughs) Here it is. The funny thing is, so last year we had champagne one of my vendors gave us a bottle of champagne, and and I don't know if you remember, Dean refused to try it. Like, he wouldn't even try it, right? So this year, we had some wine that a friend had brought to one of our Christmas parties. Right. And we thought, oh, we'll take it with us, because we were going to my parents' house. And, and we took it, did not open it until we got down there, opened it. And unfortunately, it was just a really dry wine. And so he actually did try it. I mean, just like... 
literally like his tongue on it. Yeah. And then he was like, Bleh! and of course we were all pretty like, wow, this is really dry because we're not huge wine drinkers anyways, but it was very funny. I, I just thought it was interesting from last year that he was like adamant about like, no, it's wrong. I'm not going to try the champagne. And this year being 13, he was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll just put my tongue on it. You know? Right. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Yeah. It was interesting change for us this year. I'm kind of glad that we're into the new year. Yes. Thankful that all of that is done and we can move forward into 2000, whatever year this is, 2019. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so today we're going to do something a little different. We have so many new listeners that may not have gone back and listened to show one through five and heard our story of where we came from and and how this thing really started back in 2008, which is crazy that it's been 10 years now that we've been encouraging couples in their marriages. And so we just wanted to take some time today to talk about that, tell our story again, and hopefully lay some foundations for those who don't know of where it all started. And we're really excited for 2019 and what's going to happen through this Stupendous Marriage Show. And uh, so we thought we would do a little something different today and, and hope you enjoy it. It's coming up. We have an awesome opportunity for you to really put your marriage first this year. We've teamed up with new friends at the Lake Tahoe Couples Getaway, and this comes up later in 2019. You really, really want to uh, think about making an investment for your marriage. The Lake Tahoe Couples Getaway is a four-day, three-night retreat at the only waterfront resort located in Lake Tahoe. It's an amazing beautiful resort. Mark Gunger will be there from Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Lots of worship, lots of private concerts. Brandon Heath will also be there. Chris August will be there. If you're fans of their music, you don't want to miss this. And the retreat starts at just $499 per person, which is crazy good value. They made it even easier by giving you a chance to do it via monthly payment plan of just $51 per person per month. They're going to be doing all kinds of fun activities like ice skating and hiking and ballroom dancing, which we need to go do that, babe. We do. Find out more. TahoeCouplesGetaway.com slash stupendous. Yeah, so I was thinking, I don't think we've ever told our story of why we started on the show even. Really? Okay. I don't don't think so. I mean, I have to go back and listen to old shows, but I don't think we have. So in 2003, we were married. We were? Go us. Yay! Yeehaw. It was (laughs) a crazy weekend in New Orleans, and uh, we were married in a castle in Louisiana, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Skip forward a couple years. uh, We had Dean in 2005, Mm -hmm. and um, then in 2008, we went on this big family trip. We decided to go to Savannah, and your grandmother had never been, and we figured everybody would go. It would be fun with a two or three year old and then the grandparents and the great grandma and we're going to put all of ourselves in a little condo on the beach and it's going to be fabulous and wonderful and I was about ready to pull all my hair out and you did have hair then I did have hair then (laughs) yes so um yeah maybe that's where it all started I don't know but I've made bad decisions in things in my life and it continued through our marriage and into our marriage and I was tired of bad communication and how we were talking to one another and all I remember I mean everybody's got different perspectives on life right mm-hmm. and my memory of that week was just me 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 we were at each other the whole time and I was going crazy and I was frustrated and angry with you most of the time and I don't think your perspective on that trip is exactly the same as mine but for me that was a pivotal moment for deciding like am I in this or am I out of this and I don't really want to be out of our marriage so how do I move forward and get better and figure out how to do this relationship. Well, and exactly what you just said, my memory of that trip was not that. It was difficult, which, yeah. you know, just traveling in general is difficult sure. for us or has been. And then to put on top of it other people and other dynamics and things that they want to do different from what oh, we sure. want to do. You Absolutely. know, so in a little kiddo, you yeah. know, so right. all of it, I remembered it being challenging, but I didn't really realize how much happened for you on that trip until 
all of a sudden you started reading marriage books and not just reading them, but consuming them. Yeah. So the first book I read encouraging marriage was John Gottman's book, The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. You know, that was an eye opening book for me and really frustrating, actually, uh, just you know, reading through and going, oh, don't do that. Oh, I messed that up. <laughs> right. Oh, that's horrible. I don't do that well. But it was really good. Uh, in the fact that it just sparked something, you know, to mm-hmm. move in a different path. And, you know, then I just started reading more and more books that were all about healthy relationships and how to do marriage well. And, you Gosh, know, I think you read like 20 or 30 that first season, right? Yeah, it seems like it. I, yeah. I know I have a list somewhere of all the books <laughs> I've yeah. read, but yeah. that kind of started the whole thing. And I, I'm always a person who likes to read things and then pass it on to other people. I've just mm-hmm. been wired that way. I read something and I like to figure out how to give it away. And I was like, well, I think it's more than just for me. And I think it's more than just for us. And so... I created a little blog called The Mary Blogger Mm -hmm. um, in 2009, and I didn't put my name on it at the time, but I just started writing these little blogs on that website, and I did that for about a year, and that was the original website in 2009, and then we changed to Stupendous Marriage late 2009, 2010. I was pretty much just a spectator when you were doing the Mary Blogger. I thought it was interesting and I love the way you wrote and everything like that. I think I might have written a couple of things on it initially, but I'm not a writer like you uh, in that sense. And so I didn't really jump in all the way. And then we heard about a conference that was going to be in our area and it was on podcasting and podcasting at that point in time was pretty new. And we went to this conference and I... We already have a studio because you were a voiceover artist and you voice stuff for business. But our studio only had one microphone at the time, right? Because it's not like a music studio where all these people come in. And we just looked at each other at that conference and we're just like, Duh. <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> Why are we not doing this? What are we thinking? What would we need? Gosh, we would only need one more microphone. Right. Like It just was so funny and eye-opening that all of a sudden this thing that we had had in our home for years could be something completely different. And so we went home. And of course, I, you know, at different times, I remember conversations we had of kind of like, why would anybody listen to us? It's just funny, the insecurities that come out when you try to do something like that. And I had this really cool conversation right around Christmas with a friend of mine who also is the, in the online space. And hopefully we can get he and his wife on our show sometime because he is in the finances area mm-hmm. and he does it really, really well. But he's like, Stu, we all think like that. We're all insecure. We're all doing this from our spare bedrooms. Some people just hide it a little bit better than others. I'm like, oh, that's pretty funny. That is funny. It was encouraging to me you know, because yeah. I'm like, ah, who would listen to us? I don't know. And the first couple of times initially when we started the show, we didn't have people sending in emails with questions about marriage. So you're a reader and you would go and read articles about things in marriage and we would decide which articles we really just related to and feel like we could speak into. Sure, That's really what it was for a time is us just really sitting in front of these microphones. I had somebody recently ask me, well, what exactly do you guys do in your podcast? And I said, well, we, we sit down and we talk. And they're like, really? Like you guys sit there and talk to you? Like you don't rehearse what you're going to say? <laughs> And I'm like, actually, no, not at all. Almost to a fault, right, babe? Right, exactly. (laughs) Sometimes. But we really want it to be raw and transparent. And we want God to have space to work through what we're going to say. And so we don't want to come in and have this whole thing rehearsed where you're going to say this, I'm going to say that. And we want it to be just really coming out of wisdom that the Lord's given us, things that we've learned in our own marriage or we've read and learned from other people's marriages. It's not that we haven't gone over the emails and talked about things. It's just that when we sit down to do the show, we don't plan everything X, Y, Z. We do edit the show. Yes, thank goodness. (laughs) So that's a little bit about where we have come from, what we're all about, kind of where the show came from. And now... Here's where you get to participate. We have a number that you can call. We have a number you can text. That's new. 1615 592 1060. 
1615-592-1060. If you've got a marriage question, we would love to encourage you or challenge you or inspire you in your relationship. That's what this podcast is all about. That's what it has become. And you're a vital part of what we do. And we would love to encourage you and help you if you are in a difficult season or need some encouragement or just an outside brain or two from your relationship because there are two of us here right yes it's <laughs> yes. not just me it's not just you it's not just one other brain it's two yes. for the price of none because this is a free podcast <laughs> for your marriage you know sometimes we get stuck in the day to day and wow man nothing ever seems to change and i'm just frustrated and we're frustrated we can't seem to get any toehold into anything and to reach out to someone outside of your marriage and go, hey, I'm putting my hand up. I might need some other thoughts. That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. And we would love to be that for you. I would say take advantage of the opportunity if you've ever had that inkling, oh, maybe I should email them or maybe I should text them. That was That's what we're here for. And this time of year, I think everybody's thinking about how to improve, how to set goals for yourself for the year, how to do something different in 2019 versus previous years. And so you might be listening for the first time. You might be listening with a different perspective this year where you're like, hey, this is finally the year that I'm going to dial in and really think about what I can do to improve my marriage. Because the fact is, we can all improve. We were talking about that last night. Like, there's always room for improvement. By no means do we have it all together. We still have areas that we struggle in in our marriage. But we are working towards focusing on thinking about how we can improve those areas. And hopefully, if you obviously are listening to a marriage podcast, you were doing the same thing. And so that's our heart is just to be able to help any way we can. It may be or seem like a silly question to you, but there is no silly question. And we may not know the answers, but we might be able to point you in the direction of of people who do. That's really our hope for 2019 is to have the marriage show be something to where we can interact with our listeners more. We can help more. We want to develop resources. So we really, our heart is to just love on you guys more and do anything we can for you. You can also send us an email always on air at stupendousmarriage.com. I think that wraps it up for this week. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Yeah. Like the show. Like the show. Yeehaw. Share the podcast. Tell, Tell another couple. Hold on. Hold up. Yeah, we're going to pause, right? At some point in time. Pause for what? The end of the segment. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I just don't nod. You know, once it goes out of my head. I know. Um, I'm so sorry. I have no idea what you're talking about and where you're going. Are you going somewhere? That's okay. the point. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's start over. Yeah. Like the show? Like the show? Share the podcast. Tell, tell, tell your married friends. Yeah.